May 13th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Acts chapter 23 of the New Testament Paul looked directly at the council and said, Brothers, I have lived my life with a clear conscience before God to this day. At that, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to them, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Do you sit there judging me according to the law and in violation of the law you order me to be struck? Those standing near him said, Do you dare insult God's high priest? Paul replied, I did not realize, brothers, that he was the high priest, for it is written, You must not speak evil about a ruler of your people. Then when Paul noticed that part of them were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he shouted out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial concerning the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, an argument began between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, or angel, or spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. There was a great commotion, and some experts in the law from the party of the Pharisees stood up and protested strongly. We find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? When the argument became so great, the commanding officer feared that they would tear Paul to pieces. He ordered the detachment to go down, take him away from them by force, and bring him into the barracks. The following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, Have courage, for just as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. When morning came, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink anything until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 of them who formed this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have bound ourselves with a solemn oath not to partake of anything until we have killed Paul. So now you and the council request the commanding officer to bring him down to you, as if you were going to determine his case by conducting a more thorough inquiry. We are ready to kill him before he comes near this place. But when the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush, he came and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the commanding officer, for he has something to report to him. So the centurion took him and brought him to the commanding officer and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commanding officer took him by the hand, withdrew privately and asked, What is it that you want to report to me? He replied, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as if they were going to inquire more thoroughly about him. So do not let them persuade you to do this, because more than 40 of them are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink anything until they have killed him, and now they are ready, waiting for you to agree to the request. Then the commanding officer sent the young man away, directing him, Tell no one that you have reported these things to me. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea along with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen by nine o'clock tonight, and provide mounts for Paul to ride so that he may be brought safely to Felix, the governor. He wrote a letter that went like this, Claudius, Lysias, to His Excellency Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews, and they were about to kill him, when I came up with the detachment and rescued him, because I had learned that he was a Roman citizen. Since I wanted to know what charge they were accusing him of, I brought him down to their council. I found he was accused with reference to controversial questions about their law, but no charge against him deserved death or imprisonment. When I was informed there would be a plot against this man, I sent him to you at once, also ordering his accusers to state their charges against him before you. So the soldiers, in accordance with their orders, took Paul and brought him to Antipatris during the night. The next day they let the horsemen go on with him, 
and they returned to the barracks. When the horsemen came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. When the governor had read the letter, he asked what province he was from. When he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive too. Then he ordered that Paul be kept under guard in Herod's palace. God, I'm, I'm not sure why Felix took such incredible pains to protect Paul. He sent over half of his force from Jerusalem with Paul to protect him, sending him on to Rome. I don't know if Felix was worried about his position, realizing that the passion that Paul had stirred up within Jerusalem made Felix think he was important and Felix not wanting to get in trouble himself wanted to take care of the prisoner was it because he was a Roman citizen and Felix was honoring him with that I don't know if we'll ever know what exactly happened or why Felix was taking such good care of Paul but one thing I do know is that you were watching over him you were taking care of him the entire time that he was in this situation you never left him. And I think more important for us as humans is Paul knew that. Paul knew that you were right there with him. You actually said to him, have courage for just as you have testified about me in Jerusalem. So you must also testify in Rome. So I, the Lord your God, am not lightening the persecution. I'm right here with you. I'm going through this with you. But the persecution is going to continue when you get to Rome. And Paul says, great, I have no problem with that. As long as you come first, as long as your word comes first, as long as this is your will, God, I have no problem with anything that's going to happen, good or bad, as far as this world sees it. God, we do know that you send your whole armies to take care of us, to watch out for us, to guide us. Not sure why we become so selfish and independent and think we can or want to do anything on our own. Paul knew his way around the infrastructure of politics because of who he was in his past life. He knew what was going to happen. He knew the power and how swiftly everything could change. He also knew how to antagonize situations <laughs> very well. But he did all of this not on his own strength. Paul's strength came from you. And Paul knew that. He knew that without you, there was nothing in this world he could do. With you, he could do everything in this world. And he could do everything in this world for you. Thank you for including the stories of Paul in the Bible. He's such an inspiration on so many levels of what we should look to attain as people who are called to be your disciples in this world. Thank you for guiding our steps, allowing your will to happen in our hearts and our minds, and helping guide our feet down those paths that you know that we should go because they are good for us. And patiently waiting while we fight you the whole way down those paths. God, you're just amazing. Thank you for loving us the way you do. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>